The symbology here present, when correctly understood, will tend to show that there is a deep underlying esoteric relation between 1. The mind and the lung. The process of breathing, with its stages of inhalation, the interlude, and exhalation, works out in connection with both aspects of force, mental and physical. 2. The desire nature in the stomach. Here again is the process of intake, of assimilation, and of elimination. 3. The etheric body itself and the kidneys, with the topicals clearly defined in both cases of absorption, chemicalization, and transmission. There is no symbol so relatively accurate to the whole creative process of the human frame. Congestion in the etheric body, producing much distress in the physical body, can exist. Therefore, at the point of intake from the astral body or from the astral plane, note the phrasing and the difference. Or at the point of outlet, in relation to the center to which the particular type. Copyright, copyright 1998 is this trust. 47. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Of the Theric Force most easily flows and through which is most easily passes. Where there is no free play between the etheric body and the astral body, you will have trouble. Where there is no free play between the etheric body and the physical body, involving also the nerve ganglia and the endocrine system, you will also have trouble. The close relation between the seven major centers and the seven major glands of the physical system must never be forgotten. The two systems form one close interlocking directorate, with the glands and their functions determined by the condition of the etheric centers. These, in their turn, are conditioned by the point in evolution and gained experience of the incarnate soul, by the specific polarization of the soul in incarnation, and by the raised personality and soul of the man. Forget not, that the five aspects of man, as he functions in the three worlds, are determined by certain ray forces. You have the ray of the soul, the ray of the personality, and the rays of the mental, the astral and the physical body. All these will, in the coming new age, be definitely considered and discovered, and this knowledge will reveal to the healer the probable condition of the centers. The order of their awakening and their individual and basic note or notes. The new medical science will be outstandingly built upon the science of the centers, and upon this knowledge all diagnosis and possible cure will be based. The endocrinologist is only beginning to glimpse possibilities, and much that he is now considering has in it the seeds of future truth. The balancing of the glandular system, and the relation of the glands to the bloodstream, and also the character and predispositions of many kinds, are considerations of real value and worth following. Much, however, remains to be discovered before it will be really safe to work with the glands, making them a major subject of attention as someday will be the case in all forms of illness. Throughout this short treatise I will give many hints which will serve to guide the open-minded investigator in the right direction. Before passing on to the consideration of the relationship
customer be a barrack body, as a unit, to the physical body, I would like to point out that I place the complications of congestion first upon the list of diseases arising in the etheric body, because it is at this time, and will be for a couple of centuries, the major cause of difficulty for the bulk of humanity or of those people whom we esoterically call, solar sacral people. This is partly due to the age-long habit of suppression and of inhibition with the race, as a whole, has developed. It is this congestion at the point of intake and of outlet in the etheric body which is responsible for the imprinting of the free flow of the life force, with the result of a rapid succumbing to diseases. Hence, also, you will see how carefully assigned breathing exercises, with their subtle effects of reorganizing and readjusting the subtler bodies, particularly the etheric and astral bodies, will become more and more generally used. The widespread interest in breathing today evidences a subjective recognition of this fact, though not enough is yet known about methods and effects. One other thing I would like to call to your attention is that the points of congestion may exist either in the astral body center or in the etheric body, and this situation that you will have to investigate. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 48 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric healing. P. Lack of coordination and integration. We come now to a brief consideration of our second point of difficulty to be found in the etheric body, which in our tabulation we have called lack of coordination or integration. This is exceedingly prevalent today and is responsible for a good deal of trouble. The etheric body is the inner, substantial, form upon which the physical body is built or constructed. It is the inner scaffolding which underlies every part of the whole outer man. It is the framework which sustains the whole. It is that upon which the outer form is patterned. And it is the network of Nadish infinitely intricate which constitutes the counterpart or the duplicate aspect of the entire nervous system which forms such an important part of the human mechanism. It is thus definitely, with the blood stream, the instrument of the life force. If, therefore, there is weakness in the relation between this inner structure and the outer form, it will be immediately apparent to you that real difficulty is bound to supervene. This difficulty will take three forms. One, the physical form in its dense aspect is truly connected with the etheric form or counterpart. This leads to a demoralized and debilitated condition, which predisposes man to sickness or ill health. Two, the connection is poor in certain directions or aspects of the equipment. Through certain focal points or centers the life force cannot adequately flow, and therefore you have a definite weakness in some part of the physical body. For instance, incidents of such a difficulty and a tendency to laryngitis is another, to mention two widely different disorders. 3. The connection can also be so basically used and poor that the soul has very little hold upon its vehicle for outer manifestation, and obsession or possession is easily established. So this is an extreme example of the difficulties incident to this condition. Others are certain forms of fainting or loss of consciousness and, to teeth now. There are also, as will be apparent, 
appears badly reversed conditions when the etheric body is so closely knit or integrated with the personality, whether it is of a highly evolved nature or simply an example of an ordinary etheric body, that every part of the physical body is in a constant condition of stimulation, of galvanic effort, with a result of activity in the nervous system which, if not directly regulated, can lead to a great deal of distress. It is to this that I refer in the third heading, overstimulation of the centers. Too loose a connection or too close a connection leads to trouble, though the first kind of difficulty is usually more serious than the others. I have here given enough to show how interesting and how important the study of the etheric body may be. The whole theme of healing is, tied up, to use a modern phrase which I find difficult with the development, unfoldment and control of the seven major centers. Please, overstimulation of the centers. Copyright, copyright 1998 with this 49. A treatise on the seven rays. Volume 4. Esoteric healing. There is much that I could add to what I have said on the cause of disease arising in the etheric body, but in part 2 when dealing with the section on certain basic requirements I shall elaborate the theme much further. Congestion, lack of integration and overstimulation of the centers are obviously fundamental causes as far as the dense physical body is concerned, but they themselves are frequently effects of subtler causes, hidden in the life of the astral and mental bodies and, in the case of overstimulation, the result sometimes of soul contact. The etheric body reacts. Normally, and by design, to all the conditions found in the subtler vehicle. It is essentially a transmitter and not an originator and it is only the limitations of the observer which lead him to ascribe the causes of bodily ills to the etheric body. It is a clearing house for all the forces reaching the physical body, provided the point in evolution has brought the various force centers to a condition wherein they are receptive to any particular type of force. Esoterically speaking, the centers can be in one of five conditions or states of being. These can be described in the following terms. 1. Close still and shut, and yet with signs of life, silent and slow as deep inertia. 2. Opening, unsealed, and faintly tinged with color, the light pulsate. 3. Quicken, alive, alert in two directions, the two small doors are open wide. 4. Radiant and reaching forth with vibrant note to all related centers. 5. Blended they are in each of each works rhythmically. The vital force flows through from all the flames. The world stands open wide. Related to these five stages, wherein the etheric body expands and becomes the vital livingness of all expression upon the physical plane, are the five races of men, beginning with the Lemurian race, the five planes of human and superhuman expression, the five stages of consciousness and the various other groupings of five with which you meet in the esoteric philosophy. Incidentally it might be of value and of interest to point out that the five pointed star is not only the sign and symbol of initiation and finally perfected man, but it is also the basic symbol of the etheric body and of the five centers which control perfected man, the two head centers, the heart center, the throat center and the center at the base of the spine. When these centers are fully awakened and functioning in right rhythm with each other, the various quintuplets to which I have referred.
Above form an integral part of the consciousness of the perfected man. Though this particular piece of information is not definitely related to the science of healing, yet the entire subject is related to energy, and energy in some form or another is related to the causes and the effects of disease, because disease is the undesirable effect of energy upon the energy unit which we call the atom. It should be remembered that